Many of you responded to an interview I did a while back with Susanna Harper, a young law student, pretty good young law student, who had decided to up sticks from Wellington and from her um, family home in North Canterbury and go to Paris um, with the expectation she would be unlikely to return to this country. A lot of people identified with what Susanna was saying. I can uh, privately tell you too, I think she was actually even offered a political candidacy from some branch of the, of the National Party, um, which did not encourage her to stay in New Zealand. So a few days ago, I think a couple of weeks ago, she finally turned up in, in, in Paris and she may well be sitting there uh, wondering if she's made uh, the right call. She joins us from Paris. Now, Susanna, lovely to hear from you. How are you? Bonjour, Sean. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. All right. Is it, firstly, on first blush, is the move to Paris, is leaving New Zealand, getting out of Dodge, was it the right call? Um, yes. Yes. Uh, I don't really know how else I can put that. Uh, it's amazing here. It's like nothing I've ever experienced in my life before. So everything's very new. Uh, very vibrant. Uh, there's a lot going on. Um, it's it's a completely different world over here. Yeah. Look, on your departure in that interview we did, you talked about the feeling that you'd had in times of COVID of New Zealand be, being very inward looking. I mean, I key called it the hermit kingdom, that we were insulated <laughs> and in some ways isolated. In terms of COVID, what are the differences in a city like Paris on the other side of the world? Well, actually, it's funny you say that because that was the very first thing that I noticed was that as soon as I got off the plane, COVID is not a thing. Uh, no, no, I haven't seen a single person wearing a mask, as in not one single person wearing a mask. Um, I haven't even heard the word COVID uh, in the last week or so, uh, which is, you know, different because when we're in New Zealand, a lot of the time you can't get through a a dinner party discussion or a drink at the pub without the conversation of COVID coming up. Oh, and have you had it recently? Oh, have you had it recently? Well, here, the word is not even spoken. Um, so you wouldn't even tell that it had happened um, based on where I am here. Compared so to New so Zealand, literally it, the people it, you're mixing with there have totally moved on in their heads from there the pandemic. Is no, there, is no, there is no presence of COVID-19 here. Well, wow, and you haven't had to wear a mask for, for days. In fact, when I walked into the airport in France uh, wearing a mask just because I thought, especially I had a stopover in Singapore, yeah. and in Singapore they were they were relatively strict on, on masking, Um even on the flight on Singapore Airlines, we had to wear a mask the whole time. And I turned up at the airport in, in France and they almost looked at me as though it was unusual for me to be wearing a mask and almost an annoyance for them that I had to take my mask <laughs> off my face yeah. to show them my visa photo. <laughs> like, can you please take your mask off? <laughs> How does that feel? Because so, that, that is a um, big difference to hear. How does that feel? It's It's... Uh, I have never, it's so funny because I am for the first time uh, in my life uh, in a completely different part of the world than I'm used to, but I've never felt uh, more in touch with how I used to live and how I used to feel living. I mean, the thing is that you you can just go out anywhere at any time of day and the restaurants and the bars and the cafes are just booming i mean i just look around and i think these hospitality outlets must be making a killing because of how many people are just sitting around outside inside um i mean there's just a, a cafe or a supermarket or a restaurant on every second shop or on every corner and it's just packed and there's no one wearing masks or no one's socially distancing even, so no one's even worried about being close to each other. Wow, wow. Now, you're travelling, oh, well, not travelling, you're there with some other mm -hmm. buddies from New Zealand. We always travel in packs. Are their feelings the same around the COVID stuff? Yeah, I mean, we were... We were uh, so I travelled over with a fellow student from Victoria University. Her name is Ruby Lawrence. 
and uh, it was just the first thing. It was the first thing we noticed. It was um, you could have not noticed noticed the fact that COVID. All of a sudden, it was just like moving to a different planet where it had never ever even existed. Mm, mm. All right. Yeah, what so else? She, have you, she, yeah. no, she noticed it as well. Yeah. Sorry, um, Susanna. What about? And look, it was really interesting. As I said, so many people responded to that first interview we did with you and said they kind of felt what you were feeling. Some, though, said they got the feeling you were disloyal to New Zealand or you were you were kind of rejecting the home country. Have you felt, yeah. like, ashamed to be a New Zealander since you arrived in Paris? What's it like being a Kiwi abroad? It is... Funny you mentioned that because I was a bit. I was hoping to discuss this with you. Um, the other thing I have noticed very strongly is actually that it took leaving to New Zealand to really get in touch with my patriotism. Ah. So I don't know. I don't know if um, New Zealanders who haven't been to France or Paris know this, but. They absolutely love us here. Um, they think we're some kind of exotic Pacific Island people. <laughs> um, and I literally uh, had convinced a uh, French person the other day that New Zealand didn't even have electricity yet because they genuinely think that we're from this um, far, far away island at the bottom of the world. Um, but also they absolutely love us here they like our accent i mean it's it's amazing because i i left sort of thinking oh i'm i'm really ready to leave new zealand despite you know all of the opportunities i accumulated during my you know life there um and then came to paris and realized how much uh parisians and internationals in general respect and love our culture and our people i mean um, when people uh, ask you, oh, where are you from? And you say, you know, New Zealand, and they say, oh, the best people in the world. So that's how we are perceived internationally, which is, it's, a, it's entirely humbling and exciting and it does make you feel very, very proud. How much of that from. is based around the reputation of Jacinda Ardern? Um, oh, we, we, there's not been that much discussion on... Jacinda Ardern here because the other thing is is although um, Paris is you know the culture here is more or less um, uh, left wing um, uh, liberal li there's a lot of liberalism here a lot of protesting and that sort of thing but a lot of people in the discussions I've had who have brought up Jacinda Ardern uh, don't think that she is a true form lefty. Uh -huh. um, they don't. They don't think that she um, actually uh, falls into the correct category of what a liberal left-wing person is, um, at least in the way it would be in Paris or in France, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does completely. Um, well, yeah. you sound like you've had an interesting few days. Uh, in terms of your quality of life, and we've got to appreciate that you're in the first flush of, you know, your first uh, OE, Susanna. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is better in terms of simply, I mean, how livable is this city compared with Wellington um, in terms of the quality of your housing, where you're living, in terms of yeah. the quality of the food you can eat and your daily living expenses? What's it like uh, not being in New Zealand, okay. better or worse? Okay, well, obviously the food is far superior i'm just going to just going to put that one out there straight away <laughs> it's mm. so good <laughs> yeah. um but the um uh, the culture here a lot of people you know tried to warn me i had so many people say to me before i came here oh um the french are really rude and they'll you know take the mickey out of you and um you know you'll have you'll get a bit of a culture shock but Actually, the French people have just been so nice to us. And also, I think what people fail to realise is that the French aren't being rude necessarily, or the Parisian people aren't necessarily being rude to you. They're actually just very um, black and white. 
So, for example, a French or a Parisian person wouldn't say, like we do in New Zealand, oh, we should um, totally go and catch up for a coffee or catch up for a drink, when realistically 95% of the time we don't actually mean that. We're just <coughs> saying that because we think it's going to uh, preserve this person's feelings or yeah. make them feel as though they're, they're important, whereas a French person just would not say that unless they actually intended on, on doing that. Mm. So I think that... Um, I personally gravitate towards uh, just straight up and down this and to the point. So I haven't had a culture shock here yet. So I mm. find the people and the culture very livable to immerse myself in. Um, in terms of the of the safety, it's really interesting because um, on the first night we arrived, Ruby and I stayed in a, in a hostel and for a couple of days uh, we were in there and we'd noticed that there was you know someone was clearly in the in the bed down the down the you know down the end of the room mm. they had a lot of their stuff there but we hadn't seen them in in two days so we asked we asked the roommate you know our roommates oh who who was this person and mm. you know where are they and and they all said oh he's um he's this german guy and we met him but he just left a couple of days ago and i said well Ruby and I just both looked at each other and said, "You guys, we need to go and um, alert the front desk. Like he could be, he could be mm. murdered." Mm. You know, we were we were freaking out, and they all just laughed at us. I like, absolutely thought it was just bizarre that that's what we thought had happened to this person who had not, you know, come back and gone for a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he it's it's he came back and told us that he had a French boyfriend, so that's where he was, and that all made sense. But he was absolutely found it hilarious that we were so worried about him and he said that he's never been in a hostel where um people have worried about him when he's not like strangers have worried about him when he's been like not there for a mm. few days so it's interesting i think that that really um i think that also goes to our to our culture as well um there, you you do have to have your wits about you here but at the same time, I don't necessarily feel any safer walking down Courtney Place um, after dark than I do walking around the streets of Paris after dark. So in that sense, it's it's not different. There's just a bigger population of people and also, um, yes, I'd say probably a bigger possi uh, possibility, therefore, that something bad could happen to you. But at night, walking down the street of Courtney Place, and walking down a street in Paris after dark, it, you get a similar feeling of uneasiness. All right. Well, look, it is early days, Suzanne. Have you got a place to live yet? You and Ruby got a flat? Yes. Yes, we do. So we have a, a lovely apartment in the Fifth Arrondissement, which is a lovely area um, of Paris. And um, the rent is similar almost to the to the dollar to what I was paying in my Wellington home. <laughs> Which was up on top of the terrace, your flat there, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, yes. Yeah. And it did it was it was a great place, but yes, I pay the um I pay the same amount to live in possibly the most desirable location in all of Paris. Wow. All right. Well we've got to let you get settled in. On balance though, do you still feel you made the right decision? Is it what you expected? And don't forget, when you left, you said it's unlikely I'll come back, but you have found a new sense of patriotism in just a few weeks. You still feel like yeah. this is for you, living away from New Zealand? I just feel so much more exposed to, to put it so simply, the world. Um, it is just so multicultural, cosmopolitan. I mean... It's so much more integrated here even, as in, in New Zealand, um, you know, there's still certain cultural divides, I notice, at least in, in my observation, it's in some areas. Here, it is so integrated and there is, it's just so international and cosmopolitan and you get insight and feedback from so many different people and places of the world. I mean, we were talking to people from the Ukraine the other day, for example, and they had um, come here and escaped from the Ukraine. I mean, that is just so fascinating to someone who lives 
from the other side of the world whose only opportunity to gather intel about that situation is through the media. So in that sense, you feel as though you're actually a part of it, hearing people's stories rather than just hearing what you're being fed through the media because I think that that is um, one of the things about living in New Zealand is that you do really just have to trust what the media is telling you about the world because you have really no other way of finding out. Susanna, where are you speaking to us from? Um, I'm speaking uh, from my little apartment in, mm -hmm. in Paris. It's about 10 o'clock here at night. Um, so we're having, a, we're having an early one. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you'll have to send some pictures. We'll have to do the next one with some sort of, you know, uh, travel log computer yes. background, okay? Um, but thank you well, very much. I'm glad it's gone well for you. It doesn't sound like anything's gone wrong yeah. yet. No, <laughs> no, uh, but I'll keep you updated if it does. I, I promise I'm not fully rose tinted glasses and I'll make sure I fill you in on anything else that doesn't go my way. <laughs> Susanna, thank you so much for your time. Have a pleasant evening. That is uh, Susanna Harper, who's kind of going to be, I think, our Kiwi abroad, a Kiwi in Paris, um, a, a young student finishing off her study, uh, her law studies, um, at the Political Institute in, in Paris and part of the diaspora or the post-COVID exodus of young New Zealanders searching to do that pent-up uh, OE. But what an interesting observation she made on COVID. Fundamentally, it no longer exists. Uh, in the couple of weeks she's been in Paris, comes to the airport, looked at strangely for wearing a mask. Mm. Remarkable difference. So why, so why are we doing what we do? Because, you know what, and I thought about this, because we had a year and a half, two years, where we did seal our, ourselves off from the rest of the world and we didn't have any COVID. Remember that incredible period? Mm. All that really did was delay us going through what the rest of the world has, has gone through. So we are behind. behind the rest of the world and we're going to catch up and we'll be where Paris is and where everyone else is soon. But fundamentally, and, and I don't know, as an historian or write a story, we just delayed the inevitable. Mm. And that's why we are where we are, and somewhere like Paris is uh, somewhere like uh, Paris is.